Yesterday I did a little presentation for the uh, International Association of Woodcarvers on power stropping, honing, sharpening, whatever you want to call it. And uh, after being asked many times in this channel, I've always uh, put it off because this is luxury, okay? I don't want anyone to feel that they need to go run out and buy what I'm going to show today. You can get by your whole life with a configuration of different types of strops and uh, you don't need this. This is purely for uh, laziness, convenience, you know, speed, and uh, nice to have, but you don't need it, all right? So before, <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. And again, this is my way. This is not the best way or anything else like that either. But in all the years I've been carving now, my tools have never seen a stone. So bear that in mind and all of, I keep my tools razor sharp and uh, it works for me. So that's all I can say. Uh, on that little Zoom call for the, the carvers yesterday, uh, there's other guys that came on and talked about different things. So I want to put a link in the description and uh, you can go check that out. Keeping in mind that these are just recorded Zoom calls on YouTube, but uh, a lot of good information. So without further ado, we're going to go over these. You've normally seen these sitting back here, fastened to this uh, dresser back here, but I brought them out so hopefully we can get some good light on them and uh, get you in close. But I want to do a whole variety. I don't want to just do a carving knife. I'm going to do my, my little hatchet. I want to do a big, big gouge, smaller gouge, you know, a little more a knife down to a little dockyard tool, okay? So I'm just going to run over these things and uh, show you how I, I, I maintain them and keep them sharp and uh, yeah let's do it all right so what we got here is I've got a buffing wheel here with uh, just the laminated uh, cloth wheels I keep compound on one side the other side I keep clean just for the finish I've got a 1 by 30 leather leather belt here same thing with the green compound and I've got over here a maple contoured uh, yeah contoured wheel uh, it's basically the uh, like the flex cut strop on steroids okay so you can find your profile of the tool that you're using and if you can't we go over here but I'm gonna walk you through a few things here and uh, show you how I do it I'm just gonna start out uh, I got the, like I said I got the green compound on here it's fairly heavy I don't need to add any but start with my little hatchet and I'll just work through these tools. Some of these tools are two steps with the uh, different tools. So uh, I'll just take you through. I'm just gonna put my fingers behind here and I'm just gonna find that angle. I can watch the top just to remove, as soon as the shadow is gone, I've got a good purchase on the blade. I'll just roll that around. Alright, that's one side, same thing on the other side, you will find that at angle, just roll it around, alright, like I said i got lots of compound on there, so probably too much to start with, but more 120, same thing, just going to find that angle, bring her back and forth, going to do both sides, my hand's probably in the way, but that's all it takes. This OCC tool is a flat grind, so I'm just going to put that on there right flat. I'm just going to go back and forth like so. Other way. All right, and that I this is this is ready to carve. Like we're ready to roll. That's that's razor sharp. Okay. I'm going to take a little number nine gouge here. This is a mid-sized tool. I don't use palm tools, but palm tools would be the exact same thing. Got that bevel on here. I'm just going to find that angle. Just going to roll it around on that angle. Just. All right. And this, like I said, there's two steps to those. The big one too. Can't take that. Same thing. Nothing new here. Finding that. It's removing that shadow once I have purchase of the full edge. And roll it back and forth. All right. What do we got here? The little uh, Roselli uh, carpenter's knife. This one really needs a good 
strapping. So same right on there. Scandy scandy grind like the Mora. Trying to hold it so you can see it. Right up to the tip. There we go. Little mini dockyard tool, five millimeter. Just gonna find that edge. Roll it back and forth. And that's really it for the uh, the leather wheel. So I'm gonna get that out of the way, and then we'll go on to step two. Okay, moving on to the uh, the maple wheel here. I'm just going to uh, obviously I'm not gonna find a profile for that, so that goes to the buffer. But this little number nine here in the dockyard tool, all I'm doing is finding the right profile before I turn it on. And uh, yeah, we're just getting that inside edge that we pushed over from the other side. So I'm going to turn this on. And there we go. We're just going to put that on the right profile. Same thing, always watching for that shadow to disappear. And I'm just going to roll it back and forth. And also, as you can see, it has this maple wheel here. Put the movie back a bit. A little bit more. It has the maple wheel. So I could do all of this really just on this tool here. So I can just take that same thing, finding that profile. They can skip the leather belt, but I prefer the leather belt just because it's got a nice flat surface where this is rounded. And then back on here. Right. That's it for that. Nice and sharp. Same thing with the little dockyard tool. It's this one here. I'm going to find that. Same thing, just kind of rolling that edge around there. And it, I can go back to the flat one here. And that is nice and sharp. So, I've got a whole variety of tools, and I only have a couple for this tool here, but. Uh, from the set, most of my stuff can be done on here. And uh, it's only when you get into the real big boys here that uh, I can't get that inside. And I could if I really wanted to, but it's not worth it. So that's why I have the, uh, the buffing wheel. Now, moving on to the uh, buffing wheel, the only one that I really need it for is the big gouge, but it really puts just a little extra on the rest of the tools. So, like I said, I got some green compound on one side, and this is just my cleanup side. So, let me just show you how I use the for the inside of the big gouge. And again, we'll just polish up all these tools on the way back to the desk. should say too that these wheels they uh, they all fit the contour of whatever you push into them being soft and not the solid felted so. I don't really need to be using the compound side on these but why not? Just give them a quick overview. Might as well use all the tools. Now, like I said, you can get jigs for this kind of stuff. I'm freehanding it. I am keeping a really strong grip on there, though. This is the flat grind, so. I'm 
And that is the buffing wheel. All right, well, that's about all I have to say. Just a quick overview of uh, keeping your tools sharp using power. So many ways to keep your tools sharp, and this is just my way. I don't debate it. I don't preach it. It's just how I do it. And, you know, at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding, and, you know, there's not much more to say after that. I could do this all day long. This is just as fun as carving. But that's not what we're here for. Uh, big thanks and a shout out to the uh, guys who uh, purchased the coffee this week. I truly appreciate it. It's fantastic. I love your little notes. So keep up the great work. And uh, I'll try to do my best on my end. So until the next video, I will catch you later. See you guys.